This is Tom. He travels around the world to capture his journey. And afterwards, he makes a travel video from his trip. But they are not getting traction. Honestly, that's because his videos are actually pretty boring, even though his shots are beautiful. Tom feels frustrated that his videos are not getting any views and even considers quitting with making travel videos. He knows there's something holding him back to become a better video editor, but he doesn't know what. But luckily, Tom did not give up and on his next trip, he took the extra time to look at his edit and figure out what was missing. He implemented something called speed ramping, which brought his videos to a whole new level and suddenly got more engagement and more views. Speed ramping is a fancy word for speeding up and slowing down clips, but it's easy to do wrong as well. So let me show you how to do it the right way. Take a look at this car drifting. Now, as soon as the car turns to the camera, you want to speed up the clip. To do this, right click on the FX button and then choose time remapping and select speed. Now, instead of the opacity line, we get the time remap line. If you drag it up, you will make the clip go faster. And if you drag it down, the clip will go slower. But this is just speeding up or slowing down a clip. Speed ramping means that you do this for a specific part of your video. If you hold down the control key and then click on this line, you create a keyframe on the speed graph. We'll do this one more time to have two keyframes. This divides your clip into three pieces, which means that we can increase or decrease the speed for a specific part. So your clip now goes from normal speed to fast and then back to normal. However, the transition between these two speeds feel very hard and so sudden, but we can fix that. You can click and drag to split a keyframe apart from each other. Then by pulling on this lever, you can further adjust the curve of how the speed needs to change. This will gradually change the speed over time, making it much more smooth. And this is where the name speed ramping comes from. You create sort of a ramp right here. Now, unfortunately, there are a thousand ways to do speed ramping wrong. So stick with me because I have five tips to make your speed ramping look super amazing. Faster motion means more action. We can enhance that with a simple animation. But since the clip has been speed ramped, we cannot just simply add an animation to this clip. A workaround is to create an adjustment layer from the project window and then drag that above your clip. Then adjust the length so that it's about the same as the time remap. And we're going to search the transform effect in the effects library and drag drop it on that adjustment layer. Move your play hats to the beginning of the speed ramp and set a position and scale keyframe. Then move till the end of the speed ramp and scale up the video. Play around with the position until the car is nicely in the middle of the frame. Then set the first keyframes to ease out and the second ones to ease in. This will make the position animation start smoothly and end smoothly. Now the reason we've been using the transform effect as well is because now we can add motion blur to the video and to do that simply increase the shutter angle to 180 or 3 60 degrees. This is a trick that is not being used a lot, but it makes a super big difference. However, if you're placing that speed ramping at the wrong point in your clip, it will look awful. And I've got a very easy trick to better understand where you need to add your speed ramping. But before we do that, I want to show you today's sponsor, which is Storyblocks, a platform where you can download an unlimited selection of curated and professional content. You can browse through more than a million 4K or HD stock assets, for example, green screen videos, which you can really get creative with images and so much more. Browse through thousands of pre-made professional Premiere Pro and After Effects templates like motion graphics, title animations, overlays, and so on. This will speed up your workflow and you can take your videos to the next level. And their audio library is a great help with that too. You can browse through thousands of royalty-free songs and sound effects. But Jordi, what about licensing? It's true that many stock providers make licensing expensive and complicated, but that's not the case with Storyblocks. You can use all the assets without having to worry about any copyright issues. This comes with predictable subscription costs, which means that you can stop stressing over tracking assets and take back creative control. And it doesn't stop there. You can have all of this right inside Adobe Premiere Pro. After installing the Storyblocks plugin, you can download their entire library from within this user-friendly window. Simply click the download button and whoop, the asset will appear in the project panel. And now you can also create videos even faster with Storyblocks online video editor Maker. You can use your own content or stock footage and this editor is super easy to use. Absolutely no experience required. You can make content for every social platform with a smart resize feature and with the pre-made templates, you can get started in no time. So get started now with Storyblocks and take back creative control by clicking the first link in the description down below or just go straight to storyblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics. All right, back to speed ramping. Before you add a fast motion to a part of your clip, look at the action and what's going on. Fast forwarding a part should happen in a 
fluid motion. So for this example, we want to add two keyframes around the part where this woman swings her head backwards. This creates a nice, fluid, fast, forward movement. If you were to do this on a part where she gets into her starting pose, it would just feel awkward. There's no fluid action going on in there. It are actually two movements instead of one. But all of this speed tramping now leads us to a new problem. The audio doesn't speed tramp with the video. It doesn't stretch along. So for an example, I jumped on my skateboard and did a very dangerous trick. After speed tramping this, we could take the stretch tool and stretch out the audio, but then it would not be in sync with the video anymore. So here's how to fix that. Before you time remap your video, make a cut in the audio clip at the frame where the time remap will start and will end. Then do your thing and make it slow motion. And now put the last audio clip back in sync. And as you can see, there's now a gap. Then using the rate stretch tool, extend the audio until it snaps against the other clip. And since we've rammed the speed of the video, we also need to ramp the audio. We can't really do that, but there's a workaround. Simply add crossfade to the cuts and make them the same length as the ramp that you've created on the video. And now your audio is synced perfectly. Now, alternatively, if your video doesn't have audio, but just working with music, you can make that music seem like it's going in slow motion as well. But actually, it's not. So that's kind of like voodoo stuff. Well, go to your effects library and look for the pitch effect. Drag that onto the music clip, then expand the individual parameters and set a keyframe for the transpose property at the moment that the speed ramping occurs. Go forward in time to where the speed ramping ends and decrease that value. Do the same thing on the end of your speed ramp. Set a keyframe, go a little bit further and change the value back to one. And this results in something like this. Now let me take out the big guns because the next trick is gonna be really, really, really cool. Let's say that we have these two clips of a guy skateboarding and you want to transition between these two. To do that, we're gonna find a frame where the skater is in the same position in both clips. Now if we close the gap, the transition will be smoothly because this right here is called a match cut. But Jordan, what does this have to do with speed ramping? Everything, because we can make this transition better by speeding up the last few seconds of the first clip and then speeding up the first few seconds of the second clip. That speed ramping will look something like this. That looks great now, but we can make it look amazing with one last touch. Duplicate both clips and then select them both, right click on them and choose nest, which will group them together. Now with that nested sequence selected, head over to the opacity and click on the pen tool. Now draw a very rough mask around the skater and if needed, animate the mask pad for the entire duration of the speed ramp. When done with that, don't forget to feather that mask a bunch. Next, find the directional blur effect and drag it onto the duplicate. Increase the amount and as you can see, the skater is now getting blurry. Change the direction to the same direction that he's moving. Important now is that we animate the blur length from 0 to around 10 when the speed ramp starts. And then back from 10 to 0 when the speed ramping ends. Because as you speed up a clip, your action goes faster and thus you need motion Blur. However, these speed ramping tricks mean nothing if you don't know about these four essential editing tricks. So definitely check out the video here on my left. That will make your video stand out from the crowd. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay creative.